It's time to pull out our plastic instruments once again. I promised to do a retrospective on Rock Band right after my Guitar Hero retrospective, and I apologize that it's taken this long. However, I don't really have too many Rock Band games or experiences with Rock Band that I had when I was younger, like I did with Guitar Hero. I certainly didn't grow up playing it with a couple exceptions, however we'll get through that as the video goes on. However, before we get there, we have a little bit of company backstory to get through. Now I'm not going to go as into detail as I went with my Guitar Hero retrospective, so if you have any confusion, please feel free to watch that. But essentially, in a nutshell, Harmonix was sold off to Viacom and Activision took over with Neversoft to develop the future Guitar Hero games. However, since Harmonix patented that lovely rhythm game highway, they decided to pursue a future in rhythm games as well and create the Rock Band series, which is what we're looking at today. Harmonix. Oh, Harmonix. How I loved you back in the day. You were responsible for creating Amplitude and Guitar Hero, two games that I hold very closely and near and dear to my heart. However, when Guitar Hero was sold to Activision, I felt like they took it in a slightly better direction. I don't have a problem with what Harmonix did, however, Rock Band just wasn't hitting the right notes for me, no pun intended. Up until about two years ago, the last Rock Band game I ever tried was Rock Band 1 on the PlayStation 2, and I remember a couple things jumping to my head. Ooh, pretty graphics, why can't I see the frickin' notes, and damn that overdrive. However, not all of my experience was negative, and I just so happened to own the very first Rock Band game on the Wii, so let's jump right into it. Actually, if I'm being real, we technically can't, because I don't have any instruments that will work with Rock Band 1 on the Wii. It was one of those weird ones where you had to use one of the proprietary guitars. So I could either hunt for one of those on eBay, or I could more comfortably play Rock Band on a PS2 emulator with my Guitar Hero 3 Les Paul. Oops, sorry, I already made that decision. So here's the first Rock Band game on the PlayStation 2, but badly emulated and in HD. And there really isn't a hell of a lot to look at, unfortunately. The Rock Band port to PS2 wasn't the greatest thing in the world, however it worked, so let's take a look at it. Much like Guitar Hero, you had a quick play mode, which is why I spent most of the time in this video. This allows you to scroll through most of the songs, unless you need to unlock them, and you can play them at any difficulty at any time using any instrument. And yes, there are four instruments here. We'll get back to those in a second, however, for this game, this very first Rock Band game, we're just gonna focus on guitar, because that's what I played back in the day, and this is a retrospective after all. Much like Guitar Guitar Hero, when you first choose a song, a variety of objects will pop on screen. The highway, which you should be used to by now, the rock gauge, which is on the left, which is the, sort of taking the place of the rock meter, I suppose. Basically, the lower you are, the worse you're doing. And in the top right, you have a score gauge with a little star meter, which tells you how well you're doing in the song, and also tells you the score you have. Underneath the highway, you have your multiplier gauge, which basically goes up higher the amount of notes that you hit in a row without screwing up. And slightly above that, you have an overdrive meter, which is new for this game, but it's basically the same thing as star power. You hit the white notes, activate it, and it'll make your score times two no matter how many notes you miss. That way it brings your score up a hell of a lot quicker and doesn't make you fail as quickly, unless you really, really suck. One thing that Rock Band has that Guitar Hero doesn't, and it's also something that I very much enjoy, is a solo percentage meter. Basically, the farther you are in a solo, the higher your percentage will go if you're hitting the correct notes. Now that doesn't sound like that big of a deal, however, if you're trying to full combo a song, which is when you 100% it without over or nor under strumming, it lets you sort of gauge how well you're doing in a specific section. Plus, not to mention if you're messing up a lot, you can go into the practice mode and rehearse this part. However, we have a list of bullet points to get back to, and I'm aware that this is the first game in the series, so I shouldn't go too hard on it. However, there are big gameplay issues that make the game virtually unplayable for me at points. The first thing I do have to say is the ooh pretty graphics part. Now, this isn't really a bad thing, it's just something I noticed the background's pre-rendered graphics, and that's the same problem I have with Guitar Hero Live. If you're playing the same song a couple times, you're gonna notice the same shit going on in the background every single time, and it gets really irritating at points. Especially if you're not playing the game, and if you're just an onlooker, you're gonna get really, really bored of what's going on. However, that's not really that big of a deal, and if that's the only problem I had with the game, then I wouldn't really have any problems whatsoever. My main problem is the second bullet point. I can't see the frickin' notes! This is a big problem! in a rhythm game where you're supposed to hit notes that are flying at you on a highway, especially during the solo section where the highway turns blue and is translucent. I can't see shit, especially, especially when I activate overdrive. The blue and orange notes are the same exact hue as the blue solo section and the orange overdrive section, so it gets really, really cluttered and hard to see at times. Which leads me into the third bullet point that I disliked, and it's basically the overdrive is just too overpowered. Star power was very, very minimal when you activated it, it just turned everything blue. Whereas when you turn on overdrive, ugh, the player gets flashbanged for a second, and it's very, very jarring, especially when you're trying to focus on the notes coming down the highway. 
if the highway was not transparent or translucent at any times, and if it was just a straight color like the Guitar Hero games, none of these issues would happen. It's just one really baffling artistic design that I guess the creators got used to, and I guess most gamers got used to. However, as someone who plays rhythm games with a solid colored background all of the time, this gets really, really irritating. However, I do have to end on a positive. The final word I will give on the first Rock Band game is that the set list is quite nice, and it's a hell of a lot better than the first Guitar Hero with their crappy cover songs. However, we're not completely done with the first Rock Band game, as our next game is going to be a track pack, which is basically like an expansion pack or DLC for the PlayStation 2, which didn't have DLC capabilities, as you could only connect it to the internet sometimes. I apologize for sort of speeding through the first Rock Band game in under two minutes. However, I really, really like playing on the official console instead of an emulator, and I actually hooked it up to my Aver Media this time instead of using a Dazzle, so my input lag was basically zero. Plus, not to mention, this basically is still Rock Band 1, just with different songs. And in my opinion, better songs. I find this setlist to be a lot more enticing than the original Rock Band 1 setlist, but I suppose that's what DLC is meant for, isn't it? Anyways, so this gives me a nice opportunity to talk about the multiple instruments. You see, where Guitar Hero started off with only guitar, and then later on adapted to guitar and bass, Rock Band started right off the bat with four instruments, guitar and bass, as you would expect, along with drums and a microphone. And let's go through all of them individually, shall we? We'll go through the guitar first, because that's the one I have the most experience with. The original Rock Band guitar is a Fender Stratocaster design, which contrasts nicely with Guitar Hero's Gibson designs. You have five frets on the top, as well as five frets on the bottom of the neck, which I believe do something for if you're playing a solo, but I've honestly never looked into it. You also have a whammy bar, the start and select buttons, and a non-clicky strum bar, which makes me very sad. My cat very much likes this guitar though, as he would not get off the bed when this guitar was on it, and I was trying to film around him and it was annoying. Next up are the drums, and they're pretty easy to understand. You start off with the foot pedal, and then you move upwards to see four pads, along with the D-pad and some buttons on the face. And if you look around back, there's a nice place to put your sticks. Now, these obviously aren't the sticks that the drums that came with. Those died years ago. So here are some Vic Firths that I had left over from my actual drum set. The drums are pretty comfy, but I'm not very good at playing them. Finally, there's the microphone. Now, technically, this is a Guitar Hero microphone, but they're pretty much identical, aside from the logo. You sing into here, and then the music goes through there. Also, I should probably mention these instruments all plug in via USB on the front of your console. Although all these instruments are different shapes and sizes, the gameplay is exactly the same. You're basically hitting notes as they come, and you're supposed to be working with friends and family to create a magical plastic instrument band in front of your TV, which can be kind of fulfilling when you pull off some of those hard solos. Also, fun fact, the microphone still picks you up after the song, so don't be an ass like I did. Woo! Woo! Oh my god, is this still picking me up? Holy shit, I think it is. Wow, that's pretty magical. Yeah, so I got a four star on that. Woo, I'm so good at Rock Band. Alright, alright, enough of that. Let's move on. Rock Band 2 came out for the next generation of consoles along with the PlayStation 2 and Wii, which is what I'm recording this from, and it was pretty much exactly what you would want from a Rock Band sequel. It didn't improve on a hell of a lot, though. I still have my problems with the UI and not being able to see a lot of the notes, but if there's one thing I can say, it's that the set list is even better than the last time. For some reason, harmonics always got the best songs. It, don't get used to that, just trust me. One thing that this version of Rock Band 2 has that the PlayStation 2 version of Rock Band 1 doesn't have is an avatar creator or a band customizer or whatever. Honestly, as cool as that is, I would have been a lot more interested in it a couple years ago. Right now, it's kind of primitive, and to be honest, I didn't even really mess with it. I decided to go with this swell fellow instead because he looks like a fun-loving dude, doesn't he? As stated before, the set list is a lot better than the first Rock Band game, and I think that it's a lot better than the first two Guitar Hero games. They've certainly knocked it out of the park. I just wish the UI was a little bit better. There's also cheats in this game for unlocking all sorts of stuff. I did the unlock all songs cheat because I couldn't be bothered to unlock all of the songs the normal way because I'm a dirty stinking cheater and I had a retrospective to record. As much as it pains me to say this, there really isn't much I can say about Rock Band 2. It's just kind of a continuation of the first game that improved on a few things and fixed others and... I'm sure that someone somewhere wrote a forum post in the style of a novel detailing all the differences between Rock Band 1 and 2, but honestly, I'm having a hard time finding them. The UI is very similar, the song list is of course different, but aside from that, there's not really a lot different here. It's not like a huge step between Guitar Hero 1 and 2. I didn't think I could get any shorter than my description of Rock Band 1, but I, I'm, again, I'm sorry, there's really nothing I can say. The song list is great, and the game's fun. 
However, the next game in the series was quite interesting. You see, after Rock Band 2, fans were were really, really hoping for the next Rock Band game to be totally innovative, to have some new features, maybe a new instrument, and boy, oh boy, did harmonics deliver. Ladies and gentlemen, I am, of course, talking about the masterpiece that is LEGO Rock Band for the Nintendo DS. I mean, obviously. Truly, this is the premium Rock Band experience, playing on your handheld device like a Nintendo DS without any of those obnoxious Guitar Hero on tour accessories. This is exactly what I wanted from a future Rock Band game, and this is exactly what you should all want. This is one of the greatest games ever made, pure prime. The graphics are amazingly detailed for the Nintendo DS. Everything looks so realistic and lifelike, and the song library is exquisite with Kung Fu fighting is one of the headlining acts. Oh, and you know that Blur is in this game too. Blur is gonna perform on stage, oh boy. They certainly look like it. All right, all right, enough of this. Honestly, this game is a lot of fun. Way more fun than it deserves to be. I'm not, I don't really have a lot to nitpick about it. Basically, they adapted the formula very well, and I think that it's a pretty good port. Alright, so let's stop messing around, let's get to the actual sequel, Rockman 3 on the Nintendo DS. I, I mean, I, I, on the Wii. I mean, on the Wii. Let's let's do Rockman 3 on the Wii. Rockman 3 first starts with you choosing a band name for your new band in the game, and obviously I chose the most mature and delicately selected title I could think of. And goddamn, just by looking at the menus alone, you can tell so much love went into this game. The background animations, the nice sounds, every ounce of this game is just pouring with expression and I absolutely love it. You can tell that Harmonix put their heart and soul into this knowing that it could be their very last Rock Band game, and it was for a while. And I'm extraordinarily happy to tell you that all of my three problems are gone. They fixed all three in this game, leaving behind a fantastic rhythm game and, in my opinion, the best Rock Band game ever made. Oh boy, where do I start? The setlist is amazing. I'm not seeing through the highway so I can actually focus and hit all the notes that I need to. The solo scale is back. Everything is exactly how I want it. And this is the Wii version. This is arguably the worst version. And to top it all off, they added another instrument. They added the keyboard, which I unfortunately do not own. However, I've seen footage of, and it's basically a keyboard, guys. They also added pro instruments, like pro drums and pro guitar, that you can actually hook up to the system, and you can learn how to play an actual instrument while playing the instrument. Now, I can hear you salty fanboys of the first and second games pouring out to me now, saying, well, you're just biased. Perhaps you played this game a lot when you were younger or something. Honestly, no. The first time I played Rock Band 3, was in 2016. I'm just shocked at how much love went into this game, and it reflects. On top of that, if you have the Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 version, the modding community for this game is huge and still supported. So if you know what you're doing, you can install whatever song you want into the game, and you can play basically whatever song you want. It's, it, it's so cool. Honestly, it saddens me quite a bit that this was the last Rock Band game for a while. But this was the best game possible to go out on. It's fantastic, and I can definitely see why people still play it. If I had this game for the 360, I don't think I would have ever put it down. Now unfortunately, as I said, this was the last Rockman game for a while, but it wasn't the last one ever, and just like Guitar Hero Live, they decided to reboot Rock Band with Rock Band 4, released in 2015. Now this is unfortunately the reason that the retrospective took so long to make. I have had Rock Band 4 for a very, very long time, and every time I play it, I feel a completely different emotion. I want to love it. I really, really want to enjoy myself, but just like Guitar Hero Live, there's just something stopping me from it. However, unlike Guitar Hero Live, I'm not quite sure what it is. I think it might be the calibration system not exactly working. I don't know. As you're seeing footage of right now, Rock Band 4 is basically a continuation of Rock Band 3, but with slightly better polygonal models in the background and better physics, I guess. I don't pay attention to all that stuff back there. I have a highway in front of me I gotta watch. The really only new addition is a new gameplay element called a freestyle solo, where basically you don't have to play the solo the original song wants you to, you can just play whatever on your guitar and it'll count for points, which will completely ruin some classic songs and make other songs complete jokes. Thanks to the wonderful Rock Band Network, which is basically a series of DLC songs you can download, Rock Band 4 has the largest library of Rock Band songs ever, 
And that's kind of nice that you can download these songs for two bucks a piece or sometimes cheaper if they go on sale and play them in the game as many times as you want. Certainly beats Guitar Hero Live. However, you kind of need to download new songs because the ones that come with the game aren't really that great with a couple exceptions. The key exception being I Miss the Misery by Hailstorm and Centuries by Fallout Boy. Just like Guitar Hero Live though, all of these newer songs suffer from the syndrome of it not being a Guitar Hero worthy song, or in this case, a rock band worthy song. Why in the name of hell is there an LMFAO song in my Rock Band 4? At least I can kind of get down with Party Rock Anthem, whereas Skrillex is just pure dog shit. But still, it's not really fun to play. I'd rather play a guitar song that way I actually feel like I'm headbanging on stage with like some famous rock star or something. However, with all of these house EDM dubstepy shit that keeps being uploaded to Guitar Hero Live and Rock Band 4's online stores, it completely takes you out of the element. Now, if you like any of this music, that's totally fine. I'm not trying to hate on you. However, I'm just saying that these songs consist of instruments that aren't a guitar, yet we're playing them on plastic guitars. And back to the thing I dislike. Unfortunately, I, th I think it's the calibration. I'm just never hitting the notes on time. Yet, as you've been seeing throughout the video, I have been hitting the notes perfectly for the most part in the other games, so I don't understand what I'm doing here that's wrong. Now, if you play the game for a while, I'm sure you will adjust to the calibration fine. However, I, I just can't get down with it. It just makes me wish that I was playing Rock Band 3. So if I had to pick an overall best game to go with if you had to choose a Rock Band game, I would choose Rock Band 3 and its DLC. I think that it had the best engine, it was just the best overall game. Plus, not to mention, if you're a keyboard fan, Rock Band 4 completely throws it out the window. The thing is, they try so hard to try something new, and I kind of feel bad that they fail. There's some sort of music video mode called Rock You Drama, and you can play online but only with friends. All of this useless stuff, I just wish that I had the older features that I miss. Maybe it's wishful thinking, but if they ever do make a Rock Band 5, I really hope that they take these suggestions into account. Now, before someone asks, I'll answer the question that's on a lot of your minds. Which one would I personally recommend, Guitar Hero Live or Rock Band 4? Well, the answer should be pretty obvious. I'll take five colored fret fun over hand cramps any days. Guitar Hero Live was just a miserable experience. Rock Band 4 can be fun, it's just very, very flawed. And don't bother comparing them to the classics or Guitar Hero 3 or World Tour because honestly, those are much better games no matter how you look at them. Unless you're comparing it to Clone Hero. Yeah, you like that segue? I'm gonna have to be brief here because I'm kind of running out of time for this video. However, Clone Hero is the best rhythm game you can possibly play on your computer, and arguably one of the best rhythm games ever made. And it's not even made by an official company, it's just made by fans who really, really liked Guitar Hero. Although the presentation reminds me a lot of Guitar Hero 5, the gameplay is totally Guitar Hero 3. It feels just like the original GH3 engine. I feel they did a fantastic job of bringing that gameplay to a standalone Unity built engine. The best part by far far is the song list, and by that I mean it's unlimited. You can literally import any Guitar Hero or Rock Band song into the game. I have over 1,200 so far, and that's not even all of the Rock Band songs. There's also memes, and I know you kids love your spicy maymays. Now hopefully those who are disappointed in me for not mentioning games like Frets on Fire and Phase Shift during my Guitar Hero retrospective can sleep a bit easier now that I'm referencing Clone Hero because, in my opinion, this is a lot better than those two. This is exactly what I wanted from a Guitar Hero game, and it's not even finished yet. If I do have to recommend one thing that would be added that would be really, really cool, it would be the whammy bar, because it works now in order to get star power out of notes, however, I kind of miss when you were able to whammy it and it would give the wah 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 sound effect in the video effect. I just miss that. That's the only thing I really could recommend adding. Aside from that, the creators are doing a fantastic job. So what are you waiting for? If you like rhythm games, go download Clone Hero. It's free. You can download it right now for free. And the songs you can download for free. And the really cool thing is that the creators put in pretty much any Guitar Hero guitar or Rock Band guitar compatibility. I've used everything from my Guitar Hero 2 SG on a PlayStation 2 adapter to my Guitar Hero 5 Wii guitar. Of course, I'm playing this with my Guitar Hero 3 Les Paul. They all work fine, you just have to tinker with them a little bit. And although I'm not a huge fan of the non-clicky Rock Band guitars, the Beatles Rock Band Hofner bass is probably one of my favorite Guitar Hero guitars of all time just because of how long the neck is. My girlfriend wants to get into Clone Hero, and this is the guitar I'm probably gonna end up giving her. It's just very, very comfortable. Alright, alright, I'll stop my rambling. This has been Dan of Danark Productions. Thank you so much for watching this Rock Band retrospective. Peace out, and take care.